So you're wondering why he might choose you over another woman. So let me ask you, has this ever happened to you? You've been in a relationship with a man. Maybe you've spent quite a bit of time. Maybe it's been six months. Maybe it's been a year. Maybe it's been multiple years. And then all of a sudden the relationship ends and the next person he meets, he chooses a relationship with her. And well, let me rewind for a second. You've been in a situationship or a casual relationship during this period of time. And then immediately when it ends, he chooses another woman. And you might be going, why did he choose her over me? And I want to really lean into the conversation of what it takes for a man to choose a woman. And by the way, ladies, what you really should be asking yourself is why should I choose this man? But we'll get into that's another conversation because of the title of this video. So to answer this question, why he'll choose you over another woman or why he chooses another woman over you is that he's ready to commit. He's ready to commit. What does that mean, ready to commit? He's ready to go all in. So why could he be in a relationship with you and it's, it's friends with benefits, it's a situationship, it's a casual relationship. Why isn't he willing to go all in with you and then all of a sudden go all in with someone else, okay? And usually all in is either moving in together or getting married with someone. That's really being, uh, moving in with someone is pretty close to it and marriage is an all in um, um, container. So as I got to thinking about this, I've been thinking a lot about uh, timing. Timing, what is timing? And I thought to myself, and I want to give you an analogy, okay, to help you with this. Recently, I, well, let me rewind. Timing is the next evolution. That's what really timing is. I wrote this down. Timing is merely means the next evolution that is upon us. That's what timing is. It's what's next in our our experience. This from a spiritual perspective. What's next in our experience? So what causes a person, what is timing here with that next evolution? Where does this come from? Okay. Now, I, I have a quote that says the following. Soulmates come into our lives to teach us a lesson. And our true love goes to school with us each and every day holding hands. I'm going to repeat that because this is, I think, very profound, whether you subscribe to it or not. Soulmates come into our lives to teach us lessons, and our true love goes to school with us each and every day holding hands. So do you hear the word lessons and the word school? See, relationships are a container to learn and grow as an individual, okay? Not as a couple per se, but first and foremost as an individual. In addition, a relationship is a separate container where two people go into it together to heal one another, to support one another, to love one another, to be physically intimate with one another, and it is a separate entity. See, sometimes you have chosen relationships where you needed some healing. Well, actually, every relationship is an opportunity for you. But I do believe that sometimes we've been in relationships where we were the person who needed healing. And sometimes we're in a relationship that we're here to support someone else in their healing. And sometimes it's both. This is very profound. I really want you to lean into it because many of you are probably going, well, all I've done is heal men and I've gotten no healing from it. No, you've gotten a lot from it as well. See, when you give your power away to another human being, you are being invited to heal that place within you that doesn't feel loved. See, this is why I wrote my book. This has nothing to do with dating. My book is called What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? A Journey of Personal Development, Self-Help, and Spiritual Work. There's a link below to get a copy of my book. Why am I bringing this up? Because believe it or not, every relationship affords us an opportunity to heal. Sometimes we're doing a little bit more for them. Sometimes they're doing a little more for us. But in reality, there is a balance there because every experience that you've had with another human being that wasn't as fulfilling was teaching you an opportunity to love yourself. 
excuse my slurping, but my coffee mug says, don't make me go all psycho roommate on you. <laughs> this coffee is very hot, by the way. So I want to lean into timing and I want to relate it to something that's happened to me. And I think this will illustrate this point perfectly. Many of you know, recently I threw my back out and I've been really processing what's going on here. Now, do you know, from a spiritual perspective, our back going out means not feeling supported. And what's fascinating to me is prior to my relationship with Marie, I used to throw my back out about three times a year. And when I threw it out this time, it's because I was playing golf, but there was a spiritual thing going on because believe it or not, in the 15 months I was in relationship with her and then the few months it took to kind of end the relationship, I didn't throw out my back once. I didn't throw out my back once. And I thought, what's the correlation between this? Because if back problem is, means feeling supported and I didn't throw out my back while I was in relationship, she was meeting a need of mine of feeling supported on an emotional level. And now that I'm not in relationship, and by the way, she ended the relationship, I didn't. And by the way, for those of you that claim that she made the sacrifice moving to Los Angeles, that was her choice, not mine. I didn't go out to Chicago to go look for someone. She came to Los Angeles to find someone. So just to clear that message up. But as I go deeper into this, what is throwing your back out? Well, there's another invitation, not just feeling supported, but also it's a message of taking a break. So I was lying on my back for quite a few days, lying down just to relieve the tension. See, sometimes we need to take a break. That's why coming back to this timing piece, when somebody ends a relationship, taking a break means healing or taking the time to heal from what may have transpired during the relationship. Here's where a lot of people mess this up. See, when I threw out my back, one of the things I did is I went to the chiropractor. I got a heating pad. I started to do stretches to get me back into shape, okay? I've been doing a lot to get back into shape. And during this time, and now going forward, I'm going to get back into my yoga routine. I'm going to get back into my stretching routine. I'm going to get back into regular chiropractor visits. So there's the break that I took. And I'm going to correlate this to relationships in a moment, but there's also the work after the break. Okay, now here's what happens for a lot of people that end a relationship. And this is men as well as women. The relationship ends and they binge watch TV. They overwork to occupy their lives. They're not doing, so how am I co correlating this to relationships is that they're not doing the inter, inner work to heal. And when a person hasn't done the inner work to heal, like I use the chiropractor as an example to going to a coach. I use exercise as an example to watch podcasts and listen to videos and maybe journaling and, and meditation and all these things to heal from a relationship. See, what a lot of times people do is they immediately go from one relationship to the next, just like overworking or binge watching TV, because it's a distraction to the inner healing that you're being invited to do after a relationship ends. So coming back to this title, why will he choose you over someone else? See, I started this conversation, he's ready. He's ready to commit. Maybe he's done the inner work. Maybe he's done um, personal development, self-help with spiritual work. Maybe he studied the books that I talk about. There's a link to all the books I recommend. Maybe he studied the book Eight Dates. Maybe he said to himself he wants to be in a serious relationship with someone. See, when a man makes a commitment to himself that he wants a serious relationship with someone, then the way he dates going forward is completely different than the transactional way most people are dating. What is a transactional way? See, the transactional way says, I want some companionship. I want some connection. I want some sex. And that's all I want. So I'm going to find someone who just meets these transactions for me. See, it's not about being a giver in the relationship, although men 
by the way, men seem to think that if they can give a woman an orgasm, that's all he needs to do to be a giver. If all I've given her is an orgasm, I'm being a giver. And if all I do is pay for dates, I'm covering the provider protector notion of a relationship. A lot of men think this myopically. They think this narrow mindedness that if all they do is give a woman an orgasm, he's a giver. I mean, seriously, I'm laughing at this. I, it's not a funny subject, but I do believe that's the case. See, truly giving in a relationship, really saying, I'm ready to commit, saying, I'm all in. I'm all in. I mean, in other words, if you're going through a bad day, I'm going to be there to support you. If you need someone to listen to you because you just need to vent, I'm going to be here to listen to you and not try to fix things. I'm just going to be here to support you. I'm going to help you when it comes to your family if you need some support. I'm going to be there for you if you got sick. And God forbid you really get sick and you need someone to wipe the vomit from your face because we've reached a level of love that says, I'm in it for the long haul. I'm not in it for the short haul. See, today it's so easy to enter into these transactional relationships where you can get some companionship met, some connection met, some sex met. And I want you to really, ladies, think about this. Why would you accept a relationship from a man that that's all he could provide? What's going on inside of you? What needs healing from you to say, I'm going to make a stand for what I want. I am not going to accept breadcrumbs. See, sadly, many of you think you've been chosen, and yet all it is is breadcrumbs he's given you. You know what breadcrumbs are? It's a little bit of companionship. It's a little bit of connection. It's a little bit of sex. It's a little bit of emotions. It's a little bit of feelings, but there's no consistency. There's no, there's no real intentionality in the idea of co-creating something. And I think timing plays, I, I've been harping on this word timing. I think when two people who meet and they have a natural affinity for one another, a natural intentionality in the process, a natural curiosity, a natural conviction to what they want, then they operate from a much comp completely different environment. I want to read to you uh, a quote that, or a um, message I got. Uh, you're going to love this. Okay. So let me, I just got this a few hours ago from my Facebook page. It says, Jonathan, I've been following you for ages. When I met a new man, I followed everything you said apart from the dating vows. And I'll talk about the dating vows in a second. As you haven't written, I hadn't written them yet. She said, we just booked our wedding April 19th. You are so right. I used to paint red flags green, not this time. He is truly showing up as an amazing man. He shows up always intentional, being together for two and a half years. Why she's sharing this is she was intentional by asking those critically important questions to determine if they were on the same page with one another. And if you need some support with that, there's a link right here to schedule a discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you. Folks, I'm here to help you recognize. Okay, let's talk about the six stages of a relationship. This will help you quite a bit. Please forgive me. I, I dropped this on the ground while I was talking. Now, um, oh, shoot, I got up the wrong one. Hold on a second. <laughs> so Susan Johnson, who wrote the book, um, Hold Me Tight, talks about the five stages of relationship. However, by the way, there's a copy of the book. Um, I just interviewed uh, Thais Gibson, who wrote the book, Learning to Love. Highly, there's a copy of the book as well. And she added one to these six. Okay, so let me share this with you. So within the Susan Johnson's work, she talks about the honeymoon phase, the power struggle phase, the stability phase, the commitment phase, and the bliss phase, okay? Or stages, excuse me. What Thais Gibson added was a sixth, and this is actually number one. The dating or vetting stage. 
See, it used to be when like-minded people got together. In other words, they already shared the same values. They grew up in the same community. They um, shared the same political views. They had the same family and friends. They immediately went to the honeymoon phase because the honeymoon phase is what bonds two people together. See, nowadays, because we live in a variety of different tribes, different ideologies, different methodologies of how to live life, we actually have to vet for compatibility before we dive into the honeymoon phase. But Jonathan, I'm just supposed to sit back in my feminine energy and let the man do all the work. Why are you making me think so much? This is radically, this is hard on me. <laughs> I'm being tongue in cheek. Yes, because being vetting, dating and vetting is an intentional process. It's determined. Are we really compatible with one another before we get on the honeymoon phase? But the thing is, men push the honeymoon phase because guess what? We are driven physically by sex. I was watching a, 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 a series on stars called The White Queen, and it talks about the King Henry VIII period of time of England. This is prior to Henry VIII. But it's so clear. You know, these kings, all their, and if this was a true statement, but they're all driven sexually. They're all driven by the honeymoon stage because it didn't matter if you were compatible or not because women back in the day were strictly property in many cases. Well, guess what? You are no longer chattel. You are no longer property. You have every right to vet for compatibility. And just like the woman who wrote me this message who's getting married, she did that. She vetted for compatibility. This is the conscious stage of dating first. And then you can get into the, you know, the love bombing and all the euphoria of romance. Like, see, I've always said romance should be reserved for people who are in a relationship, not as an entry point to relationship. I'm going to repeat that. Romance should be reserved for people who are in a relationship, not as an entry point to a relationship. Because... There is a deception of chemistry that could bond us to the wrong person. That's why you got to read this book, Learning Love, learning how, how, learning how you might bond yourself to the wrong person. Because that's the other thing. Men choose women. Oftentimes they choose the wrong person and you're choosing the wrong person as well. This is why I said earlier, timing, let me repeat my words again. Timing is merely the next evolution that is upon you. But within timing, the question I invite you all to explore is, have you healed? Have you gotten really solid on your why do you want a relationship? Have you gotten really solid on who's truly compatible with you? Because just like um, Neil Warren Clark, who started eHarmony, it's either Neil Clark Warren or Neil Warren Clark, I forget. He said, Compatibility ignited with chemistry is what turns a relationship on. We are such, we are a society that hyper focuses on the transactional and the chemistry piece, and not enough in the vetting, in the compatibility piece to determine if someone is worth choosing. And when a man clearly knows what he wants, he's very selective on who he chooses. When men are unconscious, they're broken, they're emotionally constipated, and technically there is no such thing as brokenness, but I, I'm just sharing it in here. They will choose the wrong person over and over again because they, they don't know what's right for them, and the person that accepts that person doesn't know what's right for them. This is just my observation that many humans experience. So at the end of the day, folks, I've said a lot of want, 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 want. <laughs> Charlie Brown, wah, 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 wah. What's the bottom line? Bottom line is, folks, get really clear on who you are as a person and who is truly compatible with you. In addition, the minute you engage in anything remotely uh, getting to know another human being, be intentional, ask deeper questions than the surface. Ask deeper questions on the surface to determine compatibility. Ask what does commitment look like for you? What does a relationship look like for you? Ask deeper questions to make sure you're on the same page. And then be intentional in the process and invite 
the man also to be intentional in the process. Because here's the thing. I know you all have been indoctrinated that the men are the leaders of the relationship. And that's all you sit back. Ladies, men are rather clueless. Not all, a lot, okay? But at the end of the day, you are in charge of your relationship, Destiny, and don't give that a power away to anyone. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? Please let me know. Please post a comment below. I'd like to hear your thoughts. If this did resonate with you, uh, please go to my website. Click the group coaching button so you can join my group where this video was shot for. Uh, this is a group where you can have direct access to me on a regular basis. It's called Midlife Love Mastery. Um, here, I'll put the... Um, I'll put the link right here. Join my group called Midlife Love Mastery. As I said, this is a group where you can have direct access to me on a regular basis. All right, I'm gonna wrap up this video as I always do. First off, give myself a big gigantic Jonathan Bear hug. I'm gonna ask him to reach in the camera and give you a big hug as well. I'm gonna ask you to turn to someone, a pet, a teddy bear, a pillow. Give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives. Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye now, bye-bye.